With the outbreak of war, Germany built 1,174 new U-boats and became the most efficient submariners in the world. Now most of their sunken remains are scattered about the ocean floors. Professor Ellis, didn't they find one a few years ago that they couldn't identify? That's correct. Because it had a gyroscopic steering mechanism that turned back on itself. It was rigged to blow itself up. Why? To keep their sub-technology from being ripped off? There are many reasons why people bury their secrets, especially during wartime. Maybe they were hiding more than spy techniques. I saw a thing on Discovery Channel about Hitler fleeing to Argentina in a U-boat. He'd be well over a hundred years old now, so I don't think there's any concern about the Fuhrer pledging your fraternity next semester. Professor Ellis? I'm Charlie Rocklin. We spoke on the phone. Did you bring it? Well, what do you think? I think you found an escape sub. An escape sub? A U-boat designed to flee Germany at the end of the war. Well, the odd thing is, the sub had any aircraft guns pointing up from the deck. The propeller guards were intact, which was quintessential American. But all German on the inside, right? German uniforms, German insignia. Right. It was cloaked, a chameleon, so it could enter local waters. They built seven escape subs for Hitler and his highest officials. Each sub was designated for one of the seven continents to maximize their chance of survival, each loaded with everything they needed to rebuild the Third Reich. From einen kommt die Welle. From the one come the many. You got this off a captain's corpse. It's a Kapitän Kamschlüssel, which identifies the ship. Well, I also saw the ship's bell. Escape subs were U-2001 through U-2007. The one you found heading to North America would be U-2007. German captains usually held the key to any secure portals. If they were stowing that much booty, maybe these symbols are some kind of an SS code? These symbols are Czechoslovakian, not German. If I can hang on to this, I'll do some research. Thanks. I can do my own research. If you're thinking of going back down, I'm warning you, it's a death wish. Yeah, it's booby-trapped. I get it. But there's gotta be a way in. There's always a way in. And when word gets out, every wreck diver and their mother will try to scrape it clean. Wreck divers are the least of your worries. Okay, look. <laughs> when you learn that there are no records of what you found ever existing, please call me. Well? Germany didn't produce any 2000 series U boats. And yet you saw it with your own eyes. A German U boat, with no record of activity, no record of even being manufactured somehow got this close to American shores. What do you make of that? All World War II military information is public domain. Unless it's covert, highest priority compartmented and sensitive, like an escape sub, then it doesn't get published. If that's true, then I'm wondering how a professor would have access. And I'm wondering if you're planning another dive. It would be suicide. You mentioned that. He also told me the symbols on the crest were Czech, not German. I can explain, but only if we do this together. Do what together? Let's discuss it over lunch. Uh, I'm in Jersey. Love Jersey. I can be there by noon. There's no time. Get in. Uh, there are two more. I think they went down there. They took the nautical GPS. They can find the site. Doesn't mean they can get inside. Do you still have the Kapitan Kamschlüssel? The crest, the captain's crest. Yeah, watch out. I think you lost him. Yeah, but we've got more company. Officer, we were being chased? Shut up. Turn around. Open the trunk. Now get inside. What? What? What, what are you doing? What's the game change? 
Why are these check? What's the deal with these symbols? It's complicated. Those are not your ordinary skinhead thugs back there. They're military trained and they want to kill everyone who knows where that sub is. Now, I need to know why. At the end of the 16th century, Prague was the center of occultism. Rudolf II employed hundreds of alchemists and charlatans in the hope of discovering the formula for converting base into gold. And for centuries, they never stopped trying. Because it's a pipe dream. Hitler didn't think so. In 1941, he started pouring every resource into an alchemy lab. He had the most brilliant chemists working around the clock. He thought he could fund the war if he could turn scrap into gold? If he could turn scrap into gold? Think about it. He could fund anything he wanted. He had a lot of secret experiments. Genetic tests to cure everything from cancer to homosexuality. Research on weapon capabilities, mustard gas, incendiary bombs, nuclear. But by the time the Americans hit Normandy, he had to abort. Rumor has it, in a U-boat. These symbols are Czech because the lead chemists in the alchemist lab were from Prague. They used distinctive Czechoslovakian allegorical symbols to communicate when they were hiding something for their eyes only. Since these symbols are on the captain's crest, we can deduce that this message explains how to get what they hid inside the boat. This symbol, in the first position, the windmill with keys as blades, means we have to go back to the source. The source? In Prague? Yes. This is Charlie 81878 again. Hey, you can't do this without me. You wouldn't even know where to begin. Oh, really? I did my due diligence on you, Charlie Rocklin. You didn't exist prior to 2004, so you must be on the run and living under an alias. Whatever you did, or whoever you are, I don't care. I'm not looking to get rich, and I won't give up until we have all the answers. Why? Why is this so important to you? Because... it will rewrite history. I need two tickets on the next flight to Prague. And I also need a quick game change for Ariel Ellis. You'll find her info at New York University. She's a professor in the history department. I hope you realize what you're getting into. How did you do this? Friends in high places. Next. Prague's houses weren't given identifying numbers until 1770. Before that, homes were known by allegorical symbols. The two suns was the writer's and artist's symbol. The white swan and the red lamb signified sorcerers. And this symbol... Alchemists? Alchemists. <laughs> 